Here we go, we are long overdue for a fleet update. The three most common questions I get asked are number one, what is the status of the Range Rover after I replaced its crankshaft bearings? Number two, am I ever going to finish my gooseneck trailer? And number three, when is the next video on the cheap excavator gonna come out? I'm gonna answer those three questions, plus go over all of my other existing and new projects in this video. I think we'll get started with the Range Rover. Now, if you remember from, I think it was parts one through five of the Range Rover series, I started by replacing the timing components for the engine. Now it's a known failure point on these five liter Jaguar V8 engines. It really is a terrible engine, by the way. But after I did that, the engine actually ran quite well. However, I noticed that there was a lot of metal in the oil. No bueno. I ended up pulling the engine out and replacing both the oil pump and also the engine bearings. Now the crankshaft bearings looked really bad on this and I think I replaced them just in time before this had a major engine failure. Since then the engine's been running really well and I think I drove it about 1300 miles before I took an oil sample and sent it into the lab. The oil test results show that everything looks pretty good except that the levels of iron and silicon are a little bit higher than they should be. I think that's the result of the cylinder scoring that we discovered in part one of this series. I should note that the engine runs perfectly well like this, and I think that while that may end up being the failure point of this engine, it's probably not gonna happen for many tens of thousands of miles down the road. It will be an interesting experiment to see how long it lasts with this cylinder scoring. So I've driven this vehicle for thousands of miles now, and it's been pretty good until very recently when everything has started to break on it, as you might expect for a Range Rover. So I think I'm gonna have to do another video in this series talking about all of this crap that broke on it. While well, I'm over here, my S550, still my absolute favorite car. I have been piling the miles on this thing. You may notice my new AMG wheels over there, which I showed in my tire machine video. I finally got those installed and everything is great. My Mercedes E320 with a three liter V6 diesel engine. This thing has been pretty good. You might notice it has some ridiculous suspension height going on there. I replaced both of the front struts and I must have used the wrong spring or wrong struts or something like that because there's at least two extra inches of suspension height and it looks ridiculous, but otherwise it works totally fine. One thing I have been fighting with this is fuel economy because I was originally getting probably in the mid 20s, which is is really not anywhere near as it should be. I ended up replacing the front brakes because I think those were dragging and also the parking brakes in the rear, those brake shoes were dragging. And I think I have some more brake issues to deal with as well. However, I'm getting there. Currently I'm getting in like the low 30s in terms of fuel economy. I'm expecting sort of high 30s is what I should be getting in this. Vanessa, now I've been able to use this to do a little bit of tree trimming around the house, which has been nice. However, after the video that I filmed, it really became clear that the engine was not running very well. I replaced the spark plugs and wires and that helped substantially. However, I then decided that it probably also needs injectors and maybe a new distributor cap and rotor. And I'm also throwing on a new ignition coil when I'm in here. Here's the thing, this engine is a pain to work on. You have to remove the intake manifold in order to access anything in there and it is such a pain to do. There are so many things that need to be disconnected to get to it. Many of those are emissions related which is kind of interesting because this is a 1994 model year and it's got a lot of emission stuff that seemed like it was bolted on as an afterthought with no regard to serviceability. I currently have all of it torn apart and unfortunately one of the EGR tubes broke because it was so rusty, I wasn't able to get it off. So I'm trying to replace that. And it's a total nightmare. I mean, I'm plasma cutting stuff. I'm getting the welder out to apply heat. I mean, absolute nightmare. I do not recommend having to work on one of these engines. It's a good engine when it works, but working on it in a van body, it is not fun. I'm gonna sort of gloss over these for now, but suffice it to say, I have a soft spot for big, comfy, flagship European sedans, and apparently I'm collecting all of them now. There will be videos on these eventually. Billy Bob here, the first big project on my YouTube channel. Of course, it's got a 5.9 Cummins under the hood, a five-speed Eaton Fuller transmission, and a custom-built flatbed 
custom paint job, the OG viewers know exactly what the deal is with this truck. It's been sitting here and hasn't really been getting a lot of love. In fact, you can kind of see it's been used as storage a lot of the time because flatbeds are so convenient for that. Now I did use it to pick up a new project, which is still loaded on the back of it. It is an enormous 5,000 plus pound hydraulic excavator hammer that I'm gonna be installing on my excavator. At least that's the plan anyway. I do have one update on this truck though. Off camera, I managed to get the speedometer working properly. I basically had to adjust the speed signal output from the transmission with this little black box that changed the frequency of the signal and then sent the correct signal to the speedometer. So it works great now. Okay, the gooseneck trailer. I probably get more questions about this than any other project I have. Look, I promise I have been working on it. Look, I disconnected the axles here and I moved them out of the way so I could do stuff back there. I was working on it in the middle of summer when it was stupidly hot out. So I bought this canopy here so I would at least have some shade to work on it. And then something came up, some projects or something. I honestly don't remember what it was, but I'm gonna get back to it. I'll try to get to it before the end of the year, but I do have some other projects that are a little bit more pressing. Brandon here has been a really good truck. I've been driving this thing all over the place, picking up new projects, one of which is still loaded on the back of it, which I will get to. I'm still planning on building a custom aluminum front bumper for this truck because it really needs it, but otherwise, yeah, this thing's been great, a total workhorse. Over here on the back of the truck, upcoming project, I bought this 10 kilowatt military surplus diesel generator. The power supply here has been really unreliable over the past year and I'm sick of losing power, so I'm doing something about it. I bought this enormous generator that can power my whole house. To go along with that generator, I picked this oil tank up for free, 275 gallon capacity. If this thing's full, it should be enough to run that generator continuously for at least 11 days. The excavator here, you guys voted in the comments to name it Hans, so that's what I've named it. Uh, the one thing that really needs to be done on this sooner than later is the track here does not have enough tension. And you guys are nice enough in the comments to let me know like, hey, if that track falls off, you are gonna have a nightmare of a time getting it back on. I think that's really good advice. So I'm gonna tension the track. There's actually like a grease cylinder in there that tensions the track. And I think the seals on it are probably bad. So I need to replace those. It's actually a really cheap fix to do However, the parts on it are so heavy that it kind of makes it difficult, but that might be my next video. I also bought a new lip edge for this bucket here, which is really worn out. It comes with new teeth and everything. It should be a really cool welding video. That is some thick material right there. Oh, and you guys already saw the hammer that I bought for this thing. I'm gonna fabricate a way to mount it on here so I can blast some of this rock that's all around my property. Just as an example, this is one of the rocks that's in the way and it is too big to move. So this thing needs to be smashed into submission. Poor Harvey over here. I haven't done anything with him since I filmed part one of this series. I did purchase a turbo from a 7.3 liter power stroke with the intention of adding it to this engine so I get a little bit more power out of it. Now, as for my plans for this, I originally mentioned I was gonna turn it into a dump truck by building my own dump body, and I may still do that. However, I'm also open to the idea of just adding a pickup truck bed to it and turning it into an enormous medium duty pickup truck. These tire machines have been great, by the way. I ended up pouring a small concrete slab underneath the balancer because the wooden pallet that I had it on was a little too rickety and it wasn't calibrating properly, but now it seems to be working perfectly like that. I am gonna get to my V12 in a little bit, but first we need to take a look here at what's becoming my automotive graveyard. Okay, I know it's sad, but the latest addition to my automotive graveyard is Wanda, my Land Rover LR3, also known as a Discovery in pretty much every other part of the world. What killed this thing? Well, the engine is actually in very good shape. The transmission's good. Mechanically, it is in pretty good shape. I mean, you can see the air suspension, has, all the air has leaked out and it's, you know, on the ground. The air suspension was kind of a pain on this, but that wasn't what killed it. What killed it was, there's a water leak coming in from somewhere. And, and that's the problem. I don't know where it's coming from. I've fixed three water leaks on the sunroof so far, two on this side and one on the other side. I have the sunroof taped up just to rule that out so I know that's not the issue. Water's still leaking in. And what happens is it leaks in on the floor over here and then there's a bunch of wiring right in here by the rocker panel. And Land Rover does these cheap splices that are not weather sealed. And when water gets in there, they all corrode and it messes up the entire electrical system on the vehicle. Now I've repaired those twice 
for different water leaks that leaked water into that. And quite frankly, I am done with it. This thing is such a pain in the butt. I have put so much blood, sweat, and tears, and money into this vehicle, fixing all sorts of different things that went wrong with it. And it's not easy to work on. It has all these design flaws, frankly, that make it such a pain. Like for example, when it comes time to change rear control arms, they're so rusted on the bushings that you can't get them apart and you have to get the plasma cutter out to change control arms. It shouldn't be that way. Come on, Land Rover, you can do better than that. Maybe learn from Mercedes. Anyway, it's sad that these vehicles are so badly designed because I really like them and I just want them to not be so difficult. If you're someone who thinks I gave up on this too soon, you're welcome to make me an offer and I'll sell it to you. Just send me a message on Instagram. So my plow truck here, if you remember I did a video where I built this plow for it, this thing's not here because it's dead, it's just here for space reasons. We did get one snowstorm last year where we got like 24 inches of the heaviest, wettest snow that I've ever seen, and it did break the truck. The CV shaft over here just snapped. Uh, while I was plowing in that snowstorm. And that made it so the truck is only rear wheel drive, which is kind of unfortunate. So I still have to make that repair. Otherwise, this plow truck is pretty good. The downside is that it's not really heavy duty enough. This is only a 1500, and it's not heavy duty enough for this plow if we get a ton of snow. Well, here it is, my most recent acquisition. An astute S-Class connoisseur will instantly recognize what this is, the very rare S600. Look at this, a massive five and a half liter V12 engine, and just for good measure, they threw in a couple turbos as well. Now I should mention, this vehicle was listed by the auction house as runs and drives, and so when the truck showed up with this car on it, the plan was, let's start it up and drive it off. However, I decided it might be a good idea to check the oil first. I found that there's no dipstick in the hood area because reasons, that's what manufacturers are doing nowadays. I looked underneath it and I discovered that there was a big hole in the bottom of the oil pan. I should show you this that I found in the trunk later on. It says, do not start, no oil. And it was really nice of the previous owner or maybe the previous owner's mechanic to print this out and put it in the vehicle. However, the auction house started it up anyway, despite this, and then they put this in the trunk. And I know that because the auction house took a picture of the instrument cluster with the engine running. I find that to be incredibly frustrating because this engine probably would have been in good shape and now it is in totally unknown condition. For all I know, the engine might be seized. So the first step, and I have not gone through it yet to do any diagnosis, but my first step is to see if I can turn this engine over by hand. If I can, that's a really good sign and it tells me at the very least, I should be able to rebuild the engine. If the engine is seized, that's a really bad thing, and it might still be rebuildable, but it's gonna be a nightmare. I suppose in the best case scenario, I might get lucky and be able to throw on a new lower oil pan, fill it up with oil, and start it up. Once I get this on the lift, I'll be able to take a closer look inside and kind of see what's going on and see if I can take that option or if it's gonna be too risky. Anyway, I'm gonna cover all of that in a separate video dedicated to this vehicle, so stay tuned for that. If I missed any projects or you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section below, and thank you very much for watching.